In this video, I am going to show you how to make your own homemade chicken stock using a rotisserie chicken. First, I'm going to use an oven roasted chicken from a Portuguese sausage stuffing recipe video that I made last week. And then I'm going to make stock out of Huli Huli smoked rotisserie chicken bones and do a side by side compare and contrast so you guys can see what the difference is. This is Eat and Be Eaten Hawaii. Let's get into it. On our channel, we are on a journey to discover everything we can about the food and food culture of Hawaii. Check out our videos on Kalua Pig, Poke, and more. This is Eat and Be Eaten Hawaii. Making stock from a whole carcass is always the best bet because there's more fat and cartilage that can seep out of the bones and out of the marrow and into the water. There's a difference between light stock and dark stock which is that dark stock means that the bones have been roasted first before being boiled in water. Of course, if you use a rotisserie chicken, a lot of the effect of that is already gotten from the initial cooking process, which will give you a darker stock without having to roast the bones in the oven before you start. Huli Huli chicken is what I'm using. This is um, chicken that on a rotisserie that are smoked using kiave wood, which is a type of tropical mesquite. But first, let's break down the recipe step by step using the carcass of this oven roasted chicken. Stock is going to become the base for your soups and sauces, so the more balance you can create in the stock in that initial process, the further along you'll be. So, when you're cutting up an onion, you got all those leftover wrappers. Same with garlic, you got all the leftover wrappers. Those are great to throw into your stock. These garlic wrappers right here were already roasted in the oven, so you're going to have all the flavor of that going into your stock as well. And then you get to the herbs. It's always best to use hard herbs rather than soft herbs. So hard herbs are ones like thyme, oregano, rosemary, sage, whereas soft herbs are more like basil and parsley. Um, but in either case, whatever herbs you have, put them into the stock, they're going to help develop and make that flavor more complex. Here I'm using a standard size large cooking pot, which I'm going to fill close to the top with water, and then I'm going to put my ingredients in and bring it up to a boil. If you have an excess of fresh herbs, you can throw those in, or you can recycle herbs that you already used. Like right here, I did some oven roasted potatoes with rosemary sprigs on top. So I'm just gonna use those rosemary sprigs. Um, you know, right here again, I'm seasoning with thyme, oregano, rosemary, a French onion soup. I can use all those that already got one round in the soup, throw them into a stock. Other ingredients you can do is like here, the bottoms of asparagus that you're not gonna eat. You could do the same thing with leeks. Um, anything like that. So take all that, throw it into a pot. Here's my leftover chicken carcass that's going to go into a pot. Um, so this is the carcass now that I roasted in the oven. You can see the herbs that were part of it. They're going in. Um, there's also a whole lemon that I stuffed inside the chicken and has a lot of nice color and caramelization on it. So that rind of the lemon is going to go in. By the way, as far as citrus um, a lemon peel, lemon rind, or a whole lemon is always a great addition to a stock to help bring acidity and, like I said earlier, round out the flavor profile of the stock. So in with all of that. And then wait for the water to come up to a boil and simply let it boil. Uh, when it comes to chicken stock, it's a shorter cooking time than beef or pork bones. So for chicken stock, an hour and a half will suffice to leach all that collagen and marrow and all the good stuff out of your carcass into the water. And the other nice thing about chicken stock compared to beef or pork is that you get far less scum developing on the surface of your stock. If you're making beef or pork stock, you have to skim that off you know, quite a lot of it. With chicken stock, it's really just a little bit, so it's no big deal. And if you're not using a whole carcass, but maybe just the bones from some chicken thighs, often you don't need to skim it at all in that case. But because we have a whole carcass here, 
a, a little bit of skimming is necessary. Um, and then, yeah, after an hour and a half, drain your stock, and this is what it looks like. It's liquid gold. Now, one very important point that needs to be mentioned is do not salt your stock at any point during the cooking process because you're going to continue to use it to make soups, to make sauces, to as a braising liquid. Whatever you're going to do with it, there's going to be more salt added throughout the process. So you want to start off unsalted and then you can add salt as you move. Here is the next day after the stock sat in the fridge. You can see all that fat solidified on the top and that's how you know it's real chicken stock that has all the stuff in it that you want. Now, let's move over to the Huli Huli smoked rotisserie chicken. I'm gonna make stock out of that and show you guys the difference in how it looks. You can already see here at the beginning of the process that it's darker than the oven roast chicken stock. And that is the result of the effect of the smoke on the uh, on, on the chicken, as well as the fact that Huli Huli chicken sauce has a shoyu or soy sauce um, base, and so that also is contributing to the darker color. But you will smell, when this is cooking, the aroma of the wood smoke instantly billowing off it. It's basically, and you, you can see in here I have nothing else, it's just the carcass. I didn't even bother adding any other ingredients because it's already such a complete flavor and tastes just like, you know, the smoked chicken does. It's delicious and a great, great way to go about making stock. So if you ever pick up a rotisserie chicken, uh, especially if it's smoked, just throw it in water afterwards and you've got some of the most delicious stock you ever will have uh, at your disposal. So now this has reduced quite a bit. After an hour and a half of cooking, the amount of liquid in your pot will reduce by about half. And then of course, when you drain it out, it's gonna lose more volume from the displacement from the carcass itself. But here it is, the smoked chicken stock. It's a little bit darker in color than the other stock. Um, and like I said, that smoky flavor is very strong. One of the beautiful things about stock is it enables you to take your ingredients in the kitchen and turn them into this powerhouse driving force of kitchen stock that you're gonna use to make so many meals with, and it's out of a waste product. It reminds me of compost in the garden where you're taking bones of animals and all these different waste products from the field, from the plants, and you're turning them into rich soil that is going to fuel the growth of future plants. So stock functions very much the same way inside the kitchen um, and it's just a great great thing to cook. Chicken stock doesn't take too long so you don't have to use all that gas or propane. You know having something simmering on the stove for five, six, seven hours, just an hour and a half and you've got really healthy, really delicious chicken stock that you can use in so many ways. If you have any tips about how to make stock or ingredients to use, please put it in the comments below. And if you enjoy this type of content, you want to give us a like and a subscribe. We have new videos every week all about food from here in Hawaii. This is Eat and Be Eaten Hawaii. Aloha.